Hey everyone, I am Robin the Copy Bitch. This is Stewie, my sidekick sloth. And today we are talking about copywriter portfolio examples. So one of the most common questions I get from new copywriters is, what should they put in their copywriter portfolio? How do they get samples if they're new to the game? I have a separate video about that that I'll link to below. But today we're actually going to look at together some copywriter portfolio examples. And I'm gonna go online and I have not looked at these ahead of time. So you'll be looking at them at the same time I am and we'll see what we see, okay? So let's get to it. I'm now gonna pause and turn it over to myself on Zoom. And here we are, guys. All right, we are going to be talking about copywriter portfolios today. Now, I have another video on how to get samples for your copywriter portfolio when you're just starting out because it's a chicken and egg conundrum, isn't it? You want to be a copywriter, but you need samples to show prospective copywriting clients how awesome you are and how do you get those samples if you don't have clients. So I have a video that talks about that. I will link to it in the comments, but this video is a little different. Once you have those samples, people often want to know how do I create a stunning copywriting portfolio on my website. So, and here's the thing, I do recommend having a website. It's just, it, it's the expectation people expect small businesses and business owners and even freelancers to have some sort of online presence. Now, does it have to be a real fancy website? No. Does it have to have tons of bells and whistles? No. Do you have to spend a ton of money creating it at first? No, or anytime actually. So don't think that I'm telling you, you have to invest in a $5,000 website. You do just need some sort of visual presence, I think, because that's where people can go to learn about who you are through a bio. They can look at your portfolio and check out samples of your work and that you have contact information and people can find you online because people do search. And you're probably seeing this right on my screen here for copywriters based on location. So it might be copywriter London, it might be copywriter Dallas. I have another video about this particular topic. I'll link to that as well about why you should optimize your site for location-based searches based on where you are physically as a copywriter. Um, because you can capture some of this traffic. If someone is searching for a Pittsburgh copywriter and you're in Pittsburgh or, you know, around the Pittsburgh area, if you're in Pennsylvania, I would say you can optimize for this. And there are 20 searches a month um, and there's not a ton of competition. So if you have a nice optimized page of your website around this phrase, you could come up on the first page of Google. And then if your site has compelling portfolio samples, Someone might reach out to you and you might get business that way. So there's there's a reason why I'm suggesting all this. It's not to make you do unnecessary work, but it's a good way to market your business because here's the thing. Not everyone is comfortable being the, the go-getter and picking up the phone and calling to businesses or sending cold emails or doing the networking thing. So your website should be working hard on your behalf. Okay. So optimizing it for various keyword searches that people are searching on, that's always smart. But of course you need to have a good portfolio as well. So once you have your samples, the next question is how should I set it up? So I thought it would be fun today to actually look at together some copywriters portfolios and websites to get some ideas and just to, you know, you'll get my reaction. You'll be looking at this at the same time I'm looking at this. Um, so you'll have your own reactions, but you know, it might get your creative juices flowing. You might be like, oh, I really like the layout of that, or I don't like the layout of this, whatever it is. And I thought we just would look at five and I will then do a bonus one. We can look at mine and whether you like it or not, that's okay too. It's just, it's information. And then you can go off and create your own portfolio page. And in terms of how you do that, some of you might have the technical expertise to create your own website or using um, like a website in a box technology, like from Wix or, or Square or something like that, which makes it really easy with their, what you see is what you get. Web editors, you might be able to design a page that looks nice. Or if you have some, some cash that you do want to invest in this, you can reach out to a web, web designer and they can design you a nice site as well. Or, you know, maybe you start with the simpler site and then in the next year or two, when you have some cash flow coming in, you upgrade to, you know, another design. So there are many ways to do it. There are ways to do it on a shoestring budget, but I'm just going to, and there's some really nice templated websites out there 
that you can get. So I'm not anti that either. If it looks nice and it's getting the job done, you know, hey, you shouldn't have to spend a ton of money for it necessarily. So, okay, I'm going to get off my soapbox. And now let's actually look at some stuff. So you know what? We were talking about Pittsburgh copywriter. Let's put that into Google and see what comes up. Let's see if I can spell today. Pittsburgh. Nope. Copy writer. Okay. So I'm Googling this. And interesting, and interestingly enough, when I was doing this for the other video, there were lots of sponsored ads. So no one is actually bidding on this phrase that I can see as of right now. So we're having all, um, this is all organic searches. If it had been a sponsored ad, it would have said sponsored. So we're seeing organic listings here. It always makes sense that you know, LinkedIn and monster jobs and glass doors coming up because it could be someone who's looking for a job. But I, you, you, and that's the thing you have to remember at search is you don't always know the intent of the person who's putting in Pittsburgh copywriter. Maybe they are, a, you know, someone in Pittsburgh area and they're a copywriter and they're looking for a full-time gig. Thus, that's why LinkedIn comes up. But there are probably also people in Pittsburgh or in the Pittsburgh area who are actually looking for a copywriter for their business. So again, you don't always know the search. That's why that's just why you have to think about things and think through things, but let's look here. So seven best copywriter jobs in Pittsburgh. Let's, I'm looking for the first person who's going to be now we're actually starting to see, oh, we see some, that's interesting. The sponsored ad is coming down here. So they must've been something with positioning. Uh, watch this not be anyone in, there we go. Nope. Yep. Here we go. Shad Connolly. And interestingly enough, this isn't even leading to his website. It's leading to his Facebook page, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it's just kind of interesting that Shad or Shade how we pronounce that doesn't have a website. Um, it's interesting here. Now, see, if you are by any chance a copywriter who's in Pittsburgh, you're kind of missing the mark because so far what I'm seeing here are basically job sites and some sponsored ads. I'm not seeing like there's someone who could you could if you could come up in organic search if you have a nice page optimized around Pittsburgh copywriter. So just take note, if by some chance you're in Pennsylvania, in the U.S., you should do that. Because right now I'm not seeing an actual person. Okay, so this might not be the best example, <laughs> which is okay, but this, this proves a point. Um, so let's actually go to, let's try to go back here and let's look at one of these other searches because that proved a point. Uh, how about a Las Vegas copywriter? Let's see what comes up for that. Let's just do this. Las Vegas copywriter. Do, 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 do. All right, we have Glassdoor. We have some jobs. Jobs. Uh, simply hired. We saw that in the other one. Again, guys, you know, it's just interesting. I'm purposely not linking on this because this is Google generated and I'm, I'm, I want to look for something in the places thing. And again, Brian, Byron Larson. I think he showed up as a sponsor down the other one in this position, not at the very top. So again, people missing. Oh, who? Let's see. Copywriter David H. Here we go. David. I don't even want to ruin David's last name. Heinzelman? Heinzelman. Okay. Finally, someone who actually copywriter David H. David Heinzelman, Las Vegas copywriter. That's why he's coming up on the first page of Google for that. So good for you, David. I come up with the ideas that turn potential customers into hardcore fans. Um, great. So that's called the meta description. With the meta description, you can tell Google what you want the meta description to be, but sometimes Google will be like, that's okay. And they pull something from your site. So I have a feeling that might be what's going on here, but 
regardless, it's still working for David. So let's look at David's site together. Um, I come up with the ideas. I turn potential customers into hardcore fans. So yeah, Google was pulling that from here. And let's just look at the site. All right. So raving fans, I get it. I get it. I get it. Let's see if I can zoom in here a bit because this is just a little bit. There we go. Um, so he, this is kind of, you know, very, look, very, very simple, but he's just leading with what his clients are saying, which is not, not a bad thing. Um, Weebly, if you're looking for a way to create a site, that's probably a, an option. And he says what he's a copywriter for, video, radio, online, email, and more. Let's see his portfolio. He doesn't have something called specifically portfolio, but he has a kind of broken out video, print, radio. Those are his focuses, which is absolutely fine. So let's click on video and see what shows up. Uh, okay, so great. You know, he's this is how he's laying out his portfolio. He's including video you would expect it to be an actual video, and it is. So a video, and then he has a short little blurb below, which explains, you know, what it was for. And that one actually was an award winner. So great. This one. Um, yeah. So this is, again, very, very simple, but it gets the job done. If someone is looking for a video script writer in Las Vegas area and they land on his site and then they go right to the video section, they can look at his work and be like, yeah, yeah, OK, we want to do, you know, we want to work with this guy. Um, now we get into print where he has one-off ads, campaigns, and other marketing. And yeah, so this is just showing off his words, which is what people are looking for. I wonder if any of these are clickable, doesn't look like it. Um, so again, you can, it can be as simple as this, you know, when someone is looking for a copywriter, they, they want to see... I like this. We are not above bribing you to have a good time. We are going to start with chocolate and see how it goes from there. That's uh, that's clever. That's cute. I like it. Let's look at radio. I do radio stuff too, so I'm curious about this. Little intro blurb and great. And then he has his examples. And that's actually, that looks nice, I think. Um, makes it very clear that it's audio that you're listening to. Then he gets into branding, sports. So, so again, this this works. So if you you want ideas for your portfolio and how to lay them out, this is a good little exercise to do. So good on you, David. All right, let us look at somebody else. Um, what do you think? What do you think? What should we do? Uh, See, I'm just doing this along with you because, you know, you can tell that I did not plan for this very well. How about, how about copywriter Tampa? Let's just see. Copywriter Tampa. I don't want to make this video super long. Like you're getting the whole point, hopefully, about how to do this. So you can go through this exercise on your own. But this is a good way to, you know, see what people are doing. All right, this looks like it might be Simply Sunny, Tampa's copywriter. Let's see. Sounds like it's a person. And hopefully I'm pronouncing his or her name right. Simply Sunny or Suni? I don't know. Sunny. I probably would think Simply Sunny. Okay. I am Tampa's copywriter. All right. So talks about what this person does. Let's look at so let's look at the about me section here. So I'm just curious. Okay. So there's Sunny. Okay, great. Nice little nice little bio. I'm not reading it in great detail, but you get the idea. Let's look at her samples. So portfolio samples. Let's see. Huh, I kind of simply sunny samples. 
she's doing a good job with the optimization like So this works, you know, and this is kind of how I have mine laid out. It's just very simple like this, where she lists based on the category. So landing page samples, blog samples, website copywriting, and then she has links and then you can click in and look into them a little bit more. So, um, which is, which is, which is fine. So let's actually click into something here. Let's look at pharmacy service page sample. Oh, oh, oh. So <laughs> that's a good lesson. And this happens sometimes on my site where I might be linking to, especially if I'm linking to a client's website page and something changes and then it's broken. So you do have to like check your portfolio from time to time to make sure your samples are actually linking to something. So um, let's go down to, this is a PDF. So this probably will show up. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. So you know, this happens, people are, are, okay, now we're going somewhere. Okay. So, and, and this, that happens, and I'm not trying to call it, like, this is my first time on the site. I, I, things break on my site, too, so just be aware that you do have to check your portfolio from time to time. And here's the thing, your portfolio is fluid. You should always be adding new content to it, especially when you're starting out. You might just be putting up everything that you do because you're just trying to fill it. But as you start doing more work for clients, you're going to have some favorite pieces and maybe some pieces that are currently on your portfolio that aren't favorites, but you just have it there because you need those examples. But once you start getting stuff that really is high quality and that you're, you know, you're kind of really cooking with gas and you have stuff that you feel really proud of, you can swap in that stuff for the other stuff. So you should be adding to your portfolio over time and making it bigger and better and swapping things in and making it different. Um, all right. So that was a good little exercise. Let's do one more because I don't want to make this video an hour. And like I said, you can do this on your own. Um, how about Copywriter San Francisco? I'm trying to focus now on ones that I actually think are going to actually have some um, copywriter San Francisco. Alrighty, I'm gonna get jobs, not surprising. 91 more jobs. Uh, not surprising, actually. Let's see. Drew Hulhorst. Okay, I, I apologize, Drew, if I'm pronouncing your last name wrong. My name is Drew. I'm a creative director and copywriter that lives in San Francisco. I write words, all sorts of them. I kind of like that. It's quirky. It's different. That kind of gives you a sense of who this person is. The fact that it just says hello on the title tag is is bold. <laughs> um, let's click into Drew and then we might come back and look and see. Drew writes words. Okay. I, I, I just immediately get a sense of very much get a sense of who this guy is about and i kind of like that like it's just it's it's cool um having trouble seeing some of this even on my screen okay yeah so i mean we got some big brand names he's written for um he has a hire me button yeah, I like the site. I mean, this is just like, <laughs> um, oh, wow. Okay, so here, the way he has his his portfolio, it's by some of these huge brands he's worked for, which is smart. I mean, if you work with big brands like this, these are names, your people are going to recognize these names, and it's impressive. So I might want to, you know, go to, let's go to the Sierra Club. Um, and yeah, so this is a video. So yeah, you get a sense of what this guy and this guy is doing like really, really great stuff. Let's see. So he's on medium. I had a feeling. Let's look at, let's look at, let's look at Microsoft. So web. This stuff is unclickable though. So Microsoft launched a company-wide initiative to empower. 
Okay. So he's done a lot of agency stuff, I think. I get that sense, which is which is great. Um, you know, let's go to about. Yeah, and we get his resume and stuff. So all good. I mean, this is a very different type. Oh, here's the homepage. I guess we weren't on the home page before. <laughs> yeah, you just totally get, I mean, just the copy right away tells you what this guy is about, which is kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, great, great irreverent writing, liking Drew, might need to follow Drew. Let's go back to see who else came up for San Francisco copywriter. Um, San Francisco copywriter, and then we're going to stop. Because you can do this on your own, but I just wanted to see if there's anyone else here. So we just looked at Oh, there's that guy again and see how searches change, you know, oh, let's look at Gil here. We have Gil and see his, his about page is cop is um, optimized with San Francisco. So that's why he's coming up, which is smart. Okay. So here's, here's a very different, um, and I might even say old school um, type of website, but you know, if it works, it works. So we have, we have Gil, I'm on his about page. Let's just go to his homepage for a second and see how that looks. Um, hello, homepage, there we go. Okay, you know, you guys, you, you, you know what this guy does, you see, someone goes here, probably what they're going to want to do is go to the portfolio. Again, the way this portfolio is done, he's broken it out, which is not a bad thing. So, um, and he's done a whole ton of stuff. So right away, you're like, okay, wow, this guy knows what he's doing. Let's go to blogging because I'm thinking there might be links. I might make it a little easier. Uh, um, I don't know if that's his blogging or what. Let's go to... Let's go to websites. Okay. So he has the websites that he's worked on, and that's how he has it listed out. So, again, there's so many different ways to build out your portfolio. Um, and there's no one right or wrong way. It's just, you know, what you have the ability to do if you're creating it yourself or what you can afford if you're having someone else do it. I do would recommend, um, you know, you having the ability to maintain it just makes it easier. Like I go in and I update my own portfolio. It depends on your comfort with technology, but it does, it does make it easier. Um, let's go, I'll show you mine. So, and you might've already been to my site, but if not, here's my site and here's my portfolio. And again, I will link to another video where I talk about how to get samples, but this is how I have it broken out. So I have website copy, I have blogging and article writing, and like each one of these things goes to the sites that I wrote. And if the site is no longer live, because some of these aren't, I have, it comes up like that, just because this was copy that I think really shows my voice, which is why I, I you know, sometimes, sometimes sites go away. It's not my fault. It just happens. Business is closed or whatever. Um, and then these link to the various blog posts, email marketing, customer stories, case studies, and brand identity, marketing brochures, white papers, advertising copy. And then over here on the side is some of my older work. I don't necessarily do a ton of this stuff. I mean, I still do. So I, you know, like radio ads, I have a whole section on radio. And this this page actually does really well in search. I get queries from people who need radio spots or a lot of times I'll get queries from people who are looking to get into radio voiceover work. So I have this, I've really kind of built out this page and I added one of my videos to help people depending on why they land there. So anyway, I think this video now is long enough, but. Hopefully it gives you a sense of 
what you need to do to create a great portfolio. And to start, just do your homework. Start looking at other people's portfolios. Do some of these searches. See what you like. See what you don't like. See if you can articulate why. And then see what you have to do to make a portfolio of your own. And like I said, if you're looking to get portfolio samples and how to do that, I will include the link to that video in the description. And I will also include a link to the blog post as well. So hopefully you found this helpful. And I'm going to throw it back to myself and Stewie. And there you have it. I hope you found those examples inspiring and helpful. And that's an exercise that you can perform on your own. And you should as you figure out how to create your own super cool, super awesome copywriter portfolio. And make sure you check out the description below because I will include links to the stuff that I talked about. There's always good stuff in the description, right? Yeah. Once again, I am Robin the Copy Bitch. This is Stewie, my sidekick sloth. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, just move along. And we will see you next time. Bye.